So let me start today with this. If there's something in your life that's very important, if it's integral to your day-to-day life, you never want to go cheap on it. If I have a commute 50 miles to the city, back to the suburbs, every single day, I'm going to buy a car that's reliable. I'm not going to buy something that's cheaper and be stranded on the Dan Ryan a couple of days later. If I'm in school, or if I have work, I need a good personal laptop. I'm not going to buy something for $500 and not have the right programs on it, or have a bad operating system. And if I'm a football team that already has a quarterback and offense floundering, I'm going to do whatever I can to keep the weapons that I do have staying put. I wouldn't try and alienate the weapons I already have. Unfortunately, though, that's what the Chicago Bears are currently doing. Allen Robinson still wants an extension from the Bears, and to voice his opinion and his distaste on the subject, he deleted every single Bears image off of Twitter and Instagram on his personal social media handles. Now, to his credit, he did keep some stuff about the Bears up there. His pinned tweet about opening day is still at the top of his Twitter page. But all of the pictures, the Bears logos, in his bio, he had, I'm on the Chicago Bears. That's gone as well. And there's been a lot of speculation that what this means is that Robinson is not getting what he wants. He could be traded, or at the very least, he won't be given an extension. The Bears have played this so poorly. How can you not give your number one wide receiver the proper money he deserves? I mean, think about it. And we've talked about this. Mitchell Trubisky needs to prove himself the only receiver that he's truly comfortable throwing to is Allen Robinson. Since entering the league, only 62% of Robinson's targets have been deemed catchable. That ranks 95th out of 100 qualifiers. And I guarantee you a lot of those have come from Mitch Trubisky. Robinson cleans up some of Trubisky's mistakes and makes sure that they never happen. Trubisky threw into triple coverage on Sunday against Detroit. Robinson somehow came down with it, and that led to the team's first touchdown. Then they went on the run, of course, and won the game. Many have complained, well, Robinson didn't get a touchdown catch. Well, he made other integral catches leading up to those touchdowns. He did play a role. And if anyone believes that Anthony Miller will easily come in and replace Allen Robinson, you're crazy. I've heard a lot of people say, well, Miller's on the up and up. The Bears don't need to pay Robinson. They've got a couple of guys coming up. They've got a couple of guys who will get their footing. No one is comparable to Allen Robinson right now, though. And even come next year, I'm not sure if Anthony Miller is all of a sudden going to be a 1,000-yard wide receiver. Never go on the cheap with the weapon that you need. The Cowboys paid Amari Cooper. He may not be a top 10 wide receiver. He's certainly not a top 5 wide receiver. But they paid him because he means a lot to Dak Prescott. He's Prescott's number one target. And I would argue that signing has worked out outstanding since they made it. It's worked out great. There hasn't really been an issue. Allen Robinson is Mitchell Trubisky's top target. Trubisky likes throwing to him. He feels comfortable. And again, Robinson cleans up Trubisky's mistakes. How is there any question as to whether to re-sign him or not? That shouldn't even be a question. That's automatic. There is, though, one reason that I could think of, going off of that point, 
as to why the Bears might be hesitant. Maybe they're not all bought in on Trubisky. Maybe this could be foreshadowing what's to come for the Bears and their offense. Maybe they're not happy with Trubisky. We already know they are. They didn't pick up his fifth-year option. What if this is sending a message to everybody that we don't care about Trubisky's number one target because in a year he won't be here, and then we won't have to pay him? That is a possibility. No one's acknowledged it yet, but put two and two together. Trubisky loves Allen Robinson. Now, granted, any quarterback would love Allen Robinson, but without Trubisky, it becomes harder and harder to justify keeping him around with a different quarterback, a possibly different system. Maybe Matt Nagy goes. Maybe the Bears are waiting this out until they see the direction and the progress of Trubisky to deem whether it's worth re-signing him. That's not that far out of a theory. Maybe the Bears don't want to pay him yet until they know 100% Mitch Trubisky is returning. Because remember, there's a lot of uncertainty here this season. The team could go in one of two directions. They can embrace Trubisky, give him an extension, and move forward. Trubisky will prove to everybody that he's good enough to be here. Or they get rid of him. And then you're really thrown into chaos. We won't know what the future of this organization holds without Trubisky. And Robinson's a big part of that. Robinson is Trubisky's number one guy. If you get rid of Trubisky, there is no financial incentive to keep Robinson. Yes, he's still a talented wide receiver. Yes, he's probably a number one on virtually any other team. But I wouldn't pay him if Trubisky left, necessarily. It may not be worth it in the long haul. And why would you, too? You're going to have to start tanking without Trubisky. You don't want Robinson here to have to deal with that. There would be no point in keeping him around. So maybe there's a long play here. Maybe it's not just black and white, let's sign him, let's not. This could have to do with what Trubisky does. Maybe Trubisky is playing for his job and technically for Robinson and his future with the team. I could see it. The main point is, though, if we are talking black and white, if we are talking extend or get rid of Allen Robinson, there really shouldn't be a question here. Robinson has done outstanding in his Bears tenure. And remember, he was a pro bowler and an all-pro before he came to Chicago. Last year, Robinson, nearly 1,200 yards. The year before, nearly 1,000. And in Jacksonville in 2015, he had 1,400 yards. And get this, last season, 154 targets, 98 catches. When he's healthy... He plays every game, and he is most quarterbacks' number one option, no question. If Amari Cooper can get paid, if a number of different wide receivers are getting paid, Michael Thomas, Mike Evans, why are we questioning Allen Robinson? Why are we waiting on Allen Robinson to get his fair share? It makes no sense. He makes this offense, whether you like it or not. He really does. Imagine Mitchell Trubisky. Imagine the Bears offense without Allen Robinson. Who'd their number one be? Anthony Miller? Cordero Patterson? Javon Wims? I mean, think about who's even behind. Allen Robinson, nobody. There is no depth whatsoever for the Bears receiving corps. If it wasn't for Robinson, I would argue 
They had one of the worst receiving cores in the game. Robinson is the glue that holds this offense together. He's the one who can boost this team from an 8-8 eight eight record to maybe 10-6. and six. And if you get rid of him and keep Trubisky, that is a huge mistake. But if the Bears are planning right now on getting rid of Trubisky, no matter what the case is, this isn't the worst idea. And that's something we have to keep in mind, I think. If we look at this again with an open mind from all perspectives, Robinson would not be worth as much if Trubisky wasn't here. And that's not because he's a bad wide receiver. It's because if Trubisky isn't here, the Bears are probably rebuilding. And there's no point in paying $15, $20 million to a receiver per year when you want your team to lose anyways, when you know you're going to be last in the division. There is no incentive to do it. If Trubisky is staying, however, and the Bears are serious about going to the playoffs, going to the Super Bowl, being a top team in the NFL, then there is absolutely no reason why you don't pay him. He's a top 10 wide receiver in the NFL today. And unfortunately, he gets no recognition because of the team and the quarterback he has. Imagine if Robinson was in New Orleans, New England, Seattle. He'd be a national phenomenon. He'd be Michael Thomas, Julio Jones, Antonio Brown at the time. He would be on that level of publicity and press because his numbers are quite similar to all of them. But because he plays here in Chicago, because Mitchell Trubisky is his quarterback and not Ben Roethlisberger or Drew Brees, no one seems to care about him nationally. No one makes a big deal about Allen Robinson, even though he may be the most skilled wide receiver in the game. I read you that stat. Since entering the league, only 62% of his targets have been deemed catchable. And the guy still gets 1,000 yards per year and still hauls in nearly 100 receptions. That's outstanding. That's talent. That's true skill. That's not hype. That's not national media hype. That's actual numerical skill. Those are stats. They can be measured. He's a great receiver. So if the Bears decide he's not good enough, if the Bears think that he's not on that level of Julio Jones or Antonio Brown or Michael Thomas, they're wrong. He is. I would argue he could be better than some of those guys. He's a skilled wide receiver, and he is the number one weapon offensively that this team has had and will have for a while. And if you let him go for no reason, you're making a big mistake. Remember, if something is integral, if something is important to you, and you need it on a day-to-day basis, never settle. Never go for the cheaper option. If I make a commute, I need a good car. If I have school or work, I need a good computer. And if I'm the Bears and I have a floundering quarterback and a floundering offense as it is, I better keep my superstar wide receiver. More to come here on Sports Talk Chicago. My interview with Kevin Fishbane comes up next, so stay tuned.